And hello everyone, welcome to this video. So in the last video, we managed to extract the name of water using a fact test. Okay, but uh, for now, the, the next job, so to speak, is to extract the boiling point of nitrogen, water and benzene uh, in Kelvin, of course, using a theory test. Let's show you where the thing is uh, in the data first. So if you take a look at water, okay, you look at water, uh, you will see that uh, the component water is here in the XML file. Uh, and where is the boiling point? Okay, boiling point is here. The normal boiling point is here at 1 atmosphere, 373.15 Kelvin, or 100, about 100 degrees C. Okay, so uh, how do you load the bo normal boiling point okay, using this name water? So I want to supply, let's say, a component name, which is water. And then I want to extract. Okay, I want to extract the boiling point. Okay, boiling point is very straightforward. Not uh, like ideal gas heat capacity and all that. Boiling point is very easy to tell whether you're right or wrong with very familiar uh, fluids such as water. How do you uh, achieve this? Okay, how do you achieve this thing? So, uh, why what I got is uh, okay. Let me show you some documentation. Okay, I will copy link address. I'll paste it here. Okay, how do you find... Oh, that didn't go as planned. But let's uh, let's see. Hmm, didn't I paste everything well? Find element... Ah, find element specific child element. Okay, so this is the full thing. Apparently, the Vim doesn't copy and paste that right. Okay, but... Okay, let's see whether this thing can still copy and paste properly. Okay, find element with specific child element. Okay, this is the this is the one I want to uh, talk about. Okay, so why why are we doing this? All right, so uh, you know you know that uh, if we want to get the boiling point. Uh, for water, okay, the water water is over here. Uh, so, the thing is that uh, this water is actually a child element of this uh, component element right here. This component has all the details for water, and this water is a child element of this component element here. And to get uh, the thing is that if you want to access the boiling point, which is here, you will need to well. It is not so simple that we just find the name water and then we go to the next. Uh, we go and find a boiling point there. Uh, so it doesn't. I mean, that's not a very robust way to do it. Okay, robust. The more robust way to think about it is to find the find the element name of water. Okay, find the the component X, uh, XML that contains all the data for water, which is what I'm highlighting here. So that we will have every all all these all these uh, things all this data for water, okay. So once we have that, then we can just select the boiling point there, and straight away we are done, okay. So how do we get this uh, this water water bit uh, right here? How do we get the component where the name is water, okay? So that's what uh, that's what that's, that's our first step. That's our first step to try and extract the boiling point. We extract the whole element first. Okay. Once we extract the whole element, then we can uh, get whatever we want: critical temperature, critical pressure, boiling point, etc., etc. Okay. How do we load water element? How do we load the element? Okay. The the thing is found here. Find an element with a specific child element using link to XML, and then we are going to use the X element thing. Okay. I'm not going to explain how this code works, right? I'm not going to explain how this code works, uh, but all right. So uh, remember, I already told you we, we had uh, I already briefed you on what this elements method is, okay? And basically, what we do is to just copy and paste this bit, okay? This uh, this i enumerable of x elements, uh, it basically extracts the the uh, so-called uh, find the element with it finds the element oh, there's a lot of word elements here finds the element for example component with 
uh, where the child element, okay, the child element, which is uh, the water name here, it has this specific value. So uh, this code, this code is specific to this uh, test configuration XML. So let's take a look at this example provided by Microsoft. Here, yeah, Microsoft has kindly provided us this uh, test config XML with all this XML data. And let's uh, take a look at this, uh, what this code is trying to do. Okay, it's trying to uh, load the elements. Okay. okay, this example finds the test element whose command line child element has a value of example to the exe. So let's take a look. You see this whole element here, the root element here, this is called the tests element. Can you see? It's uh, encapsulated tests and tests. And the child element of this tests element is over here, test. Okay, test is this element right here. Okay, test element is just like our component elements, is a child element of this uh, tests element right here. So we are nesting, we are nesting these uh, x elements within each other, XML elements. Right, so you want to find a, you want to find these uh, test elements so long as the, uh, so long as the command line, you can see this command line here, is example two dot exe. Okay, so what is this trying to do? It looks for the test element where the child element has a value example two dot exe. So this child element here is this command line element right here. Okay, command line element right here. So based on this uh, command line element right here right here, I want to return this entire element which I'm highlighting here, all right? And of course, you'll find that another example 2.exe command line element here. So if that is the case, I want to return this entire uh, element here as well. Okay, how does it do that? Uh, it uses this uh, i enumerable, okay, i enumerable of x element, okay, so this this uh, i enumerable gets named as tests, okay, uh, from l in root elements test, okay. So uh, let's roughly uh, explain what this code is doing. Okay, root, the root element will be, uh, I guess everything here. Okay, but we want to select. Okay, sorry, the root, the root element will be this test element right here, oops. Yeah, this test element right here, this is the root element. And I want to select a list, a list of elements where the name is tests. So this is the list of elements which has the name test. And that's basically every of these elements right here. Test, 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 test. And uh, what do you select, okay? How do you populate this i enumerable here? Where string l dot element command line so where the string okay string is the return type of this uh, element okay okay so this element uh, this element that I'm highlighting here represents each of these specific elements okay and then after that uh, this element here has elements inside them so this element here has elements inside them like name, name, command line, input, and output, right? So, so L dot element is to access access the uh, individual elements within uh, this element here. So they are nested within each other. Yeah. So what? Which element are we looking for? We are looking for the command line element. Command line element. And the command line element is right here and it's looking for example 2.exe. So where string l dot element command line, so where the command line element has a string of example 2.exe. Okay, so you're looking for this example 2.exe element and then uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are checking it. Okay, if it, if it fulfills this criteria, then we select the, the, the whole element itself. Okay, so this is the child element. It's the l dot element uh, command line equals example two. So if it fulfills this criteria, then select everything here. So that is what this line here is doing, or what these two lines here are doing. So that's sort of an if loop right there. Okay. 
So, uh, and then this part, it says, for each x element in L, uh, for each x element L in test, so we've already populated this test element, console write line string element dot attribute. So what is this attribute here? Right? So uh, you can see that uh, this test here is the x element. Then you see this test ID equals to 0 0.0006. This, these things here are called attributes. Okay, these things here are called attributes. So uh, we do see examples here as well. Uh, uh, you, will see, you will find a lot of these examples in XML file. I will not show you too much. I see, um, I write the string L dot attribute test ID, right? I'm looking for the test ID attribute and I'm trying to get the value. Okay, we are trying to get the, the string L attribute test ID. Okay, this is the value here. Okay, so when you console write line that, what do you get? 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 6. So I'm getting this test ID here. I'm getting this test ID here. All right. So that's the example code in, um, that is the example code in C sharp. Okay, how do you do it in Visual Basic? Okay, so from uh, keyword Visual Basic. Okay, this is the the keywords in Visual Basic. Uh, from where select. So select, oh, maybe that's not good. We'll go back, use this. Yeah, keywords, Visual Basic, Microsoft Docs. <clears throat> so let's look for the for keyword, uh, from keyword. Okay, from. Okay, from keyword is here. And this is how the syntax looks like in Visual Basic, because here all of this is in C sharp. So I'm very, uh, I make the mistake often of just type copying and pasting this C sharp code, not forgetting to change the syntax type. But this is how, uh, this is how uh, uh, this is supposed to be done. Look at Visual Basic, dim all orders from blah 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 in blah blah blah. And then from something in something, select something. So uh, this is how roughly the from uh, the from syntax is uh, supposed to be done. Here it says from element in root not elements test. Okay, so this thing is like an i uh, i enumerable root elements test. These are i enumerables, which we can use from statement. So this thing over here is an i enumerable. So from Dot, dot, uh, from uh, this uh, individual elements of the i enumerable in i enumerable. So this is like a list. Okay, so it's pretty much the same for the from from part, except there's no uh, semicolon here. Okay, C sharp there's a semicolon at the end of the day, but yeah. From dot 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 and so you will, you will also use the select keyword right here. Uh, select keyword right here. So it's pretty much the same as over here, except no semicolon. Okay, and then what about uh, using the where keyword? Okay, the where the where keyword over here will look like this in Visual Basic. Okay, where customer, uh, this is where, where the where keyword is. Just take note of the differences. We still use the where keyword. Okay, the where keyword is here. Okay, over here, uh, we specify the type and when we, when we try to make it equal, we test for equality, we use two equals in C sharp. Whereas over here we use one, uh, one, one equal sign. Okay, over here we use two equal signs in C sharp. Here we use one equal sign. Over here we use uh, now there's a lot of a lot more typing and a lot of uh, you have to like specify the return types here. Here the return type is string. Okay, you have to specify that return type. Over here you don't really specify any return type. Okay at least in this code. Now that you, uh, of course, copy and paste it, uh, but uh, yeah, now that you've seen that, let me show you how I did it. Okay. So here is my load water x element code, which I'm no longer uh, using. Well, I write this code here like for reference, but I 
commented out the fact so that when I run the test, I don't really uh, do anything. So, what do I do? Water X element, for example, if I want to select the, the whole water component element, water component X element from L in X element list, where L dot element, okay, we are looking for the name. Remember, we are looking for the name. We equals to water, equals to water right here, and select L. Okay, select the element. Okay, then after that, I will actually write out all the X element inside the water component X element. Right, that is what I do. Okay, so what do we? Uh, how do we do it? How do we set up? Okay, I will sh uh, show you. First, uh, we need to load our X document first. That is the first thing. So that is what this part here is doing. Uh, okay. I will, I will just uh, I will just load all of this yank I okay. can oops wrong keyword undo please okay uh, control control B control B so so as to page up okay 22 up now paste it here okay so first let me let me just load this X document first console dot right line Okay, XML data, and let's execute the test. Okay, 11 up. Okay, back X this. Okay, dot net test. So I will run this test up. Okay, so you see it will print out everything here. Okay, if you're not sure, yeah, I will I will I will show you the case where I didn't execute this test, and then I will execute this test. Okay, dot add test. So when I don't execute this test, there's like nothing printed out. Okay, and when I execute this test, right, there'll be things printed out so usually when I do this testing thing I don't want to see so many things printed out okay uh, when I do automated testing if I do manual testing then yes I want to see printing so yeah I, I have written out all the XML data I've shown you how I got that then what do we do with this okay we need to get the individual uh, we need to get the individual list of elements right so what do we do okay uh, so over here Okay, I load my XML library loaders and then I load this DW Sim brute force class in and then I get my XML data as X document. Okay, what, what then is the next step? Okay, next step here is to get the individual components. So how, how do I do it? Okay, I, I do it here. Dim X element list as I enumerable of X element. Okay, oopsie. Yank these. Go to the top, 24 uh, J, paste. Okay. So I showed you the elements method already. So this shouldn't be uh, anything too new. Okay. For each X element in uh, X element list. Then I'll put a next here. Shift O to go on top. Console console right line uh, what well, x element okay let me go nine on top and delete this so this is just to show you okay I'm going to print out all the elements here okay which uh, instead of having all the components out I'll have a list of all these uh, components individual components right here Okay, now what do we do? Okay, I will use that, that special select code that uh, we have been talking about, which is uh, all right here. Finding this element. So, okay, pretty much everything is the same except, uh, except you know, the, the, uh, the semicolons, yeah? So, so take note, uh, 
I'm not going to copy and paste this part because or I could. Maybe I'll do it later if I if I run into errors. But uh, yeah, just follow follow this. Okay, dim uh, uh, water x element uh, list as uh, right i enu i enumerable. Okay, of x element. Okay, and then uh, that should be okay. Hopefully no errors. Okay, no errors here. Open a new line. So I need to load, I need to load all the elements that have the name water into this uh, I enumerable list. So that is what this code here is doing. Okay, uh, so water x, x element list equals to what happens? Okay, now we start using our from keywords, where keywords, and select keywords. So I'm going to copy like word for word. F from, from what? From L in root.elements. Okay, root.elements is this I enumerable list that we returned. In this case, it's, uh, it is this X element list. From L in X element list. Okay, because this is a list I enumerate through. So instead of uh, having this uh, root elements list right here, I have this x, uh, x element list right here. Okay? So I'm enumerating through that. Next step is to use the where statement. Where. Okay, I will use the where statement. I'll go to the end. Of course, this looks very messy now, but... Hopefully it will still work. Okay, where what? Where, uh, well, we'll look for the thing here. L dot element. Okay. L dot element. Okay, we are looking for. Okay, here they are using the command line. Uh, uh child node. I'm looking for the name child node. Okay, so let's look for the name. Where child node name equal because uh, this is visual basic we have to use single equal sign not like c sharp double equal sign l dot element dot name equals to okay we'll just use the water keyword here l dot element name equals to water so we'll have uh, from where and then we have to select select l okay so uh, i'm going to move this down here And then I will paste it here. So I'll go 11 up. Oh, 22 up. So for each X element in now no longer X element list, I'm going to change this to water X element list. Okay, so what are we doing here? Okay, I don't want this line anymore. 6DD. I'll delete this to make it look slightly more organized. Of course, everything looks scrunched together. Okay, so what are we doing here? We are making a, an element list where the name of this uh, X element, uh, this uh, L dot element, L dot element, we are accessing the element with the name, one element with the name, okay, name equals to water. Okay, then we write the X elements right here whatever x elements are in this list. So this list only has one element in it, one x element, because only one component is named water. So let's see what happens. Okay. So look at this. We loaded the element, the water component right here. So you want to see it in a bigger... You want to see it in bigger test kind of thing dot net test okay so you see we loaded the water component right here on oh, one component okay one component and all the things in water are put here all right so now that we have this 
Now that we have this uh, water component, now that we have this water component, the next step will be quite uh, straightforward, especially if you take a look at the patterns they supplied. Okay, so two down, open line. Yeah, so uh, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want just the, uh, the water thing. Okay, I don't want, I don't just want the water thing. I want actually, uh, I want the boiling point, right? So how do we get the boiling point? Okay, we use this element method. So right, so this, this whole thing, this component thing is the X element. Okay, and then these individual things here are the child elements. So this element I'm interested in is called normal boiling point. Okay. So let's try to look at that. Instead of uh, accessing X element, I'm going to access the boiling point. So I'm looking for the specific elements where the name is called normal boiling point. Okay. And let's see what happens. And you take a look. I've already accessed the element. I've accessed the child element with this thing called normal boiling point. So we have accessed the normal boiling point. And that's not the end of the story yet. We still need to uh, get just the number itself and convert it into a double. So the last two parts are here. So after uh, uh, we do that, okay, I'll dim uh, X element uh, dim boiling point X element as X element okay boiling point X element what I, what, what I said it equal to equals to X element dot element okay normal boiling point save and then what will I do I will console right line boiling so I'm going to write the name of this point x element dot name console right line boiling point x element dot value Okay, so I'm just accessing the name and value of these things. So you see, when I, say, and when I access the name of this, okay, I'm loading this X element here. I'm loading this X element here, this entire X element here, into this boiling point X element. Okay, once I uh, load it here, this boiling point X element object has two properties we are interested in. One is the name, okay, so the name here is of course normal boiling point and we're looking at the value as well, the value is 373.15 Okay, but uh, unfortunately these, these are not the final return types we want yet, we still need to convert them to doubles So let me paste this here So uh, we can look for the type of this Get type Okay, and we'll do the same for this part here. Okay, I want to show you what kind of types they are returning. So they're not exactly the types we want. Look at this. The normal boiling point type, okay, the normal boiling point type which is here, this is a system link X name type. Whereas uh, this type here, this 373.15 is a... Uh, it's not a double, it's a string. We need to convert it into a double. Okay, so let's let's do the uh, console right line. Okay, we will change it to a double. Okay, so I just call this uh, boiling point or water equals to convert to double. We use a convert method, which is common in all uh, .NET. Okay, boiling, boiling point x element dot value 
Okay, and now I'll, I'll take a look at I'll take a look at the uh, boiling point water. I'll print this out, and then next thing I'll print out. Next thing I'll print out is boiling point water dot get type because you want the correct return type. Okay, let's do a .NET test. Okay, okay, boiling point water is not declared. Okay, uh, I didn't do that. So, dim boiling point water as double. Okay, you see this? 373.15, we have printed it out and now we have converted it to double. So that's how we extract the boiling point of this water as a double using the aforementioned methods. Okay, so uh, this is the code I want to show you. All right, this is the code I want to show you. Uh, I've demonstrated it for you. I'm not going to save this to GitHub because I already have uh, this example right here called test uh, XML loader load water boiling point. Okay, so I use pretty much the same thing right for each element in co component water the uh, elements okay if element name equals to uh, normal boiling point boiling point equals to this element value okay we are doing pretty much the same thing right here except over here i use this uh, if loop uh, instead of the for loop okay so and then of course i convert it to double as well okay you can use either of these codes these are just two ways of doing pretty much the exact same thing okay so uh, of course I think this this code is way more efficient I do not want so many if loops in in my code but yeah this this thing actually does the job as well so it's really up to you how you want to write your stuff how you want to uh, do your code but yeah that that's what I do okay so I'm going to delete this whole test sub here. Okay, so uh, file dd, I'll repeat until it is deleted. And I'll save, insert this. So yeah, now I've demonstrated to you how this code actually works, how you can write your code. And of course you can uh, check this out, check these links out. It'll be helpful for you if you want to deal with these X elements. Okay, that's all for this video. I'll see you again.